So I'd like to convene this meeting for the San Lorenzo Valley. Oh, that's, oh, oh, hang on just a minute. Got that one, Scott? Did you get the other one? Okay. Everybody have their... I'm not online. I'm not online. So it's not me. <laughs> that's why I didn't bring mine, because I can't Let's try it out again, Mark. <laughs> okay. That's, I'm not getting a reverb now. Okay, good. Okay, all right. I'd like to convene this meeting for the San Lorenzo Valley Water District Board of Directors uh, for July 20th, 2023. Holly, would you take roll? President Smalley. Here. Vice President Hill. Here. Director Ackman is uh, going to be late. She sent an email to both the president and myself. I'll make a note when she does arrive. Okay. Director Falls? Here. Director Mayhood? Here. Okay. Um, any additions or deletions to the closed session agenda? Staff has none, Chair. Okay. Uh, oral communications um, regarding any of the items that are in closed session. Um, we have no members of the public in attendance here in person. Um, I see one attendee as a Samsung, but I don't know if that's a member of the public or not. Uh, would anybody like to address anything in the closed session? Not seeing any. Um, I propose that we then adjourn to the closed session. Thank you. Okay. I have Muted. Okay. Oops. It's time. <laughs> Kendra, can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Takes a while to get used to the lighting, the camera. So this is neat. You can join without audio. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, but Jeff joined with audio, but he just turned it off. <laughs> Multiple ways to do it. Mm -hmm. It's all, it's all pilot error. Well, I wouldn't use it at all. Oh, yeah, no, no, let me see. And that's why I like it, too. Mike will speak. I see that it's 6.30. So I'd like to reconvene this meeting for the Board of Directors for the San Lorenzo Valley Water District. For July 20th, 2023. Holly, would you take roll again for us? President Smalley. Here. 
Vice President Hill. Here. Director Ackman. Here. Director Fultz. Here. Director Mayhood. Here. Okay. Um, the board has, we have nothing to report as far as any actions taken in closed session. Um, additions and deletions. Uh, Rick, do you have any? The staff has none, sir. Add to this agenda. Okay, oral communications. This portion uh, is for oral communications by members of the public on any subject um, that is not on the agenda this evening. Um, and I'd like to remind the public at this point that uh, presentations are limited to three minutes in length. Please state your name and town or city of residence for the record. Begin of the statement. Um, does anybody in the public want to speak on something that's not on the agenda? Please step up to the. I'm John Jameson from Pelton. I don't know that this needs to go. Maybe that's what I simply want to express my uh, sorrow that uh, uh, I'm forgetting his name now. Josh. Josh. Yeah, that. Uh, he died uh, on June the 8th. And uh, I thought he was a great asset to the water board, and I'm sorry he's gone. Josh uh, Wolf. Wolf. Thank you. Thanks, John. We appreciate your coming yes. here and saying that. Okay. Moving on. I don't see anybody else online from the public or anybody else in the audience. Okay. Um, Unfinished business, we have none. Uh, new business, item 10A is the delinquent water charges. Rick? Yes, and we have the, the finance manager on video here to address the board on this item. Kendra? Okay, good evening, everyone. This item pertains to placing customers delinquent and unpaid water and other service charges on the county tax roll in accordance with water code section 31701. This means of collection is a result of the utility billing policy adopted via resolution number 25 in fiscal year 2021 um, on June 17th, 2021. The attached listing encompasses customer accounts with a past due balance of, as of December 31st, 2022, with a total past due balance greater than $500. Two rounds of letters were sent out, one on April 18th, and then a final notice on May 23rd. The district will be placing 128 customer accounts on the tax roll for a total of $176,335.97. Uh, this is the third year the district has used this means of collection. Um, staff are currently an analyzing the data and internal procedures for possible revisions um, to our internal procedures in order to capture more accounts. Staff is recommending that the board by motion adopt the attached resolution approving the delinquent water charges that shall be submitted to the County of Santa Cruz for collection on the property tax roll and authorizes the district to enter into an indemnity agreement and to provide additional information required by the county. Does anyone have questions? Okay. Yes, Kendra, we will have questions. Okay. okay. Um, so I'd like to start with the board. Uh, Bob, do you want to start this one for us? Uh, sure. Um, Kendra, what percentage of the outstanding invoices does this represent? Um, let me pull up my spreadsheet here. So you mean as of the past due, as of 12-31-2022, including all, any um, amount that's less than 500 as well or yeah i'm trying to get an idea of how much we're cat what percentage of what we have outstanding uh, as of whatever date um it, this represents and this would be of invoices that are more than 30 days i mean it has to be legitimately correct you know yeah yeah okay um let me bring up that sorry i didn't have that open hold on one second I mean, is it roughly 60 percent, 50? Um, just hold on, give me, let me open that up. I mean, I don't need it down to the point. 
point zero. I don't know off the top of my head the rough okay. estimate, so I just need to open this slot. Okay. So our from our lot from the status report included in this um, agenda for May, the past dues, the total is. Total over 30 is 434,000. Um, and then this actually encompasses, so since it's as of 12 31 2022, this would con be considered a balance over 120 days. So the total balance over 120 days is 277,000 as of May. Um, so that's about 176. Two thirds. That's about two thirds. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, next question is, what is the issues associated with not being able to capture more? What, what kind of revisions are you talking about? So a lot of it is um, timing and with sending out letters. So per the code, we're actually able to collect um, any balances that are more than 60 days past due as of July 1st. Uh, but doing this would only allow us to send out one letter because um, I believe per the code in the letter, you have to include the past due amount on the statement. Um, so it would give a really short time frame for the customers um, to you know, make a payment or give us a call to set up some sort of arrangement or whatnot. Um, so in the past, the district has decided to, you know, as a courtesy, give two notices rather than one. So it's more so just a timing issue. And we've been keeping it consistent as of the 12 31 2020 date um, in the past, just to keep it consistent year over year. Um, but now that you know we've done this for a few years and I've really had a chance to analyze it, um, I think we can, you know, be I would be comfortable, you know, choosing a, a past due date as of March 31st. Um, cause that would still allow us to send out, you know, a notice to all the customers, um, the required notice for the code. And, um, I ran the numbers for as of a March 31st due date, and that would be encompassing 245,000, um, if we were to do it that way. So I think that's probably going to be the route we go in the future. Um, it's just for this one, we stuck with the 1231 due date. I, I would definitely encourage you to do that. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. honestly, this is really the first year I've really had a chance to analyze yeah. it. Because obviously last year I was on maternity leave and the year before that um, it was handled by the prior finance manager. So now that I've been able to kind of analyze it more, I think we need to update our internal procedures. Great. And last question was you'd mentioned that you do send out notices. Did anybody respond to those notices? Yeah, so if you look, um, you'll see that in, I believe, in the April and May um, status report, you'll notice there was a decrease in the past due accounts. Um, so that, I believe, is a result of, you know, the customers receiving the letters and saying, oh, you know, I need to make my payment so this doesn't get put on my property tax roll. Um, so, yeah, we do see, you know, a little bit of a pickup in people paying their past due bills once they receive that letter. Great, well, since I was in favor of this from the time I joined the board, um, uh, it's really great to see it come to fruition. And I think it sounds like with the refinement next year, yeah. we'll be able to capture the vast majority of the, of the um, back due that is eligible. Yes, for sure. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No questions. Yep. So, Kendra, how successful is the county at collecting this? I mean, I know, you know if you don't pay your property taxes, you get, uh, you know, eventually they'll take your, your property. But uh, what percentage of success are we seeing if we send them X dollars worth of billing? What are we getting back, say, within six months? Right. Um, so I don't have that number with me right now. Um, that's something I can get for you. Um, and maybe send out an update to everyone. Um, but that, you know, that's something I can do in the analysis. I just don't have that for right now. Yeah. 
That's fine. Excuse me. I think if if uh, Lois was here, she'd yeah, tell she'd you say they teeter. teeter. <laughs> yeah, they teeter. They pay <laughs> us before they, pay they get paid. Yeah. Yeah, because they have an interest rate that's, shall we say, a little bit larger. Yeah. <laughs> if you know so that your property before taxes. they get paid. Teeter. Yeah. They Remember teeter. the word. Yeah. I do know that they pay us, you know, they pay us in April, June, or April, <coughs> excuse me, in December, April, and June. Um, it's like a 50%, 45%, and 5%. Um, but that's, you know, for what they've collected on. And then they charge um, penalties on the uncollected balances as well. Thank you. Thank you. Jane? Um, these accounts that we're placing onto the rolls, are, are they all accounts, just to clarify my understanding, uh, that have gone um, past due in the last year? Or are some of these, you know, things that we're rolling over from year to year? Uh, so, so these are people that have a past due balance as of December 31st, 2022. Um, so whatever bill went out, whatever, any billings, through December 31st, 2022 have not been paid yet. Um, so once we, so let's just say someone was on the property that got sent to the property tax roll last year, we would have wrote their balance off of the account and placed it into like a receivable account. So that balance is no longer on the customer's account. So we're not double, you know, putting amounts onto the tax roll. Um, it's just anything that's been unpaid as of December 31st, 2022. I see. Um, and do we have any visibility into whether any of these properties could be properties that are like still, you know, resolving damage related to the CZU fires? I mean, I have heard some horror stories about people being, having, not with us, um, Big Basin customers who, ha who had lost their homes in the fire and, you know, have had some real problems. Um, with their billing, uh, you know, as a result. And so I just want to make sure that we don't have anyone caught in our... We're not supposed to. We're not supposed to. No, because so all of the CZU homes um, that were damaged are in our basic waiver program. So they're currently not being billed. They should not have a balance. Thank you for the reminder. Appreciate that. Okay. Yeah. That should be extended if necessary to allow them to get through the county torture chamber. Absolutely. Yep. That's it. That's that aspect isn't part of this motion no. this evening. Okay. Um, Kendra. Go the board budget and yeah. finance has Added. discussed that and it will come okay. to the subsequent meeting. Okay. Um, Kendra, I agree with uh, Jeff's question of, uh, so what percent of recovery have we seen? Um, if you were able to take um, a past year, um, maybe the first year that we did this and just give us a, an assessment of that and what the county's able to give back uh, to us on. Um, and I understand that, uh, at least from Rick, just wanted you to confirm that this does simplify things for staff prior to what we were doing. Correct. Uh, to putting these on tax rolls. Yeah. Um, you know, the shutoffs were really kind of drove a wedge between us and the customer. And because it's not like we want to be shutting off people's water. Um, mm -hmm. So this is this is definitely a more not humane way, but you know, not as brutal way of you know letting the customers know, hey, you need to pay your bill, but while still providing them access to water. Right. Um, so you know, it's definitely more courteous, and um, I think we I think it the collection rate on this rather than you know shutting off water every single month and you know people. We would find that you know people would get their water shut off and they would only be paying the minimum amount required to get them turned back on and it was just something that was happening every month and it was just you know this kind of game um so this is definitely more more collect we've collected more doing this route rather than shutoffs good Mark. and it, it sounds like it uh reduces staff involvement particularly field yeah. staff out yeah. there turning off meters turning on meters and Definitely, yeah. Okay. Historically, there was about 200 customers that were routinely in arrears that were always that that our guy was always going out and hanging the 
the the door tag and then shutting off and then returning and all that it was a very complicated process um, all right and to a question that Jamie was alluding to, um, I see one of the customers on here has an outstanding balance of $5,000. Yeah. Year. And a number of others are in the $2,500 to $4,000 range. They've accrued that in, in a year? Well, so I believe last year... Um, Didn't have as many. There was a... There, yeah, there wasn't as many and... Um, that's unfortunately the year I was on maternity leave. So um, it, it's probably a carryover from the people that should have been on last year. Um, that was, yeah. Okay. So this is more than a year's worth of service for those. For dollar exactly. Individuals. Okay. Well, or there, or there, you know, in turn, there, there could be a, a few um, that are just using a lot of water and they just haven't paid. Um, so okay. within that year. Okay. All right. Well, um, sounds good I could, to me. Can I ask another question? <laughs> do Do we go out and I mean, like, if somebody's used five thousand dollars worth of water that they haven't paid for in a year, do we ever like go out to the property and just like, what's going on here? Is there something? You know, like, <laughs> I, I, I think that would be a little creepy, actually. <laughs> I mean, we have like an internal process. If we see obviously a high read come through, we'll go out and check that, but. Um, not necessarily for someone that just hasn't, isn't paying. Um, yeah, if it's a leak or something. Right? Yeah. Um, well, given uh, I've heard from the board, I'll make the motion and then go out to the public. I'd like to move that the board adopt the attached resolution approving the delinquent water charges that shall be submitted to the County of Santa Cruz for collection on the property tax roll and authorize the district to enter into an indemnity agreement and to provide additional information required by the county. I'll second that. Okay. I'm sorry, um, I'll second it. Okay. Uh, would anybody like from the public like to comment on this? Uh, seeing none here, I see none online either. Um, Holly? President you Smalley? Yes. Vice President Hill? Yes. Director Ackman? Yes. Director Foles? Yes. Director Mayhood? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Um, moving on to item 10B, Rick Breckenbray and Four Springs. Yes, thank you. In, in May 2021, the board approved a letter of intent to consolidate uh, Brackenbray and Four Springs mutuals into the San Lorenzo Valley Water District. Um, the district received uh, funding from the Department of Water Resources Small Community Drought Relief Program for consolidation as a grant with Brackenbray and Forest Springs in the amount of 3.2 million back in May, 2022. Um, again, in May, 2022, the board authorized a design and engineering contract with Sandus Engineering to design consolidation piping on a water storage and pumping station. To transfer water into the two mutuals, a pumping station is required. Sandus Engineering and staff located three parcels uh, that would be a suitable location for the pump station. The criteria um, for the pump station would be hopefully in a public right of way, constructible terrain being flat, uh, three phase PGE power available, and the proper elevation uh, to move water. And then probably most important would be a willing property owner that would allow the pump station to be constructed on their property. Out of the three parcels, only one location met the criteria and had a willing property owner to work with the district in selling an easement to locate the pump station. That is uh, HeartMath LLC. For those of you who've been around a long time, it's the old Forest Pool parking lot off of uh, West Park Avenue. Uh, the district uh, contracted Nicholson and, and Company appraisers for an evaluation. Um, the market value of the easement or take area stated in uh, as of the effective date of the valuation and subject to the assumptions and limiting conditions of the assignment is concluded to be $4 a square foot uh, or $6,563. Uh, in discussion with the property owner of Harpath. Uh, Harpath has set a price 
uh, for the easement at ten thousand um, dollars. Staff is asking uh, the board to authorize the district manager to purchase a 1,265 square foot easement from Hartbath LLC for $10,000 for the purposes of to construct a pump station uh, as part of the consolidation project. And with that, I'll try to answer questions. Okay, thanks, Rick. Um, Gail, questions? Seems pretty straightforward to me. Do you have any questions? Okay, go ahead. Uh, two questions. One, when I looked at the appraiser's drawing of the property, I saw a, a roughly rectangular piece of property with a smaller rectangle inside of it, uh, which we would be getting the easement for, and a fairly narrow uh, access stripe out to the public road. Um, I did not see how wide that access road was. Um, I assumed it was. Uh, an access road for piping. Do we have guaranteed vehicle access? Yes, we do. I think that access road is both piping and a vehicle. Okay. Obviously, the piping is underground, um, and uh, that is like a drive not, area. Not worried about the piping, but I right. want to make sure we didn't have an easement three feet wide for piping and then right. drive yeah. So that is also. Um, other question uh, at a recent board meeting, uh, we had a member of the public concerned about. Uh, possible pump noise at one of the locations we were looking at, and I don't know which, which location that was or if it's this location. It is this location. Okay. Uh, were you able to, um, you offered to escort him to another pump station somewhere and take sound readings? Were you able to? I, I did reach out to that individual. I have not heard back. Um, Sandus Engineering, which is the prime engineering consultant, has hired an acoustic engineer to review the design and to make recommendations um, to put uh, additional engineering together. And we told that customer that we would make that report available to them. I imagine um, he just entered into a contract. I imagine that's probably about three weeks out mm -hmm. uh, before we get that report back. Okay. I just want to make sure you're doing the due diligence on that, that particular issue. Thank you. Okay. The um, parcel is constructible and flat, but the access road is that also it's flat, flat too? Oh, okay, it's, it's well, it's almost flat. This We're, is slight. I gotta grade, be sliding out on us. Yeah, no. Okay, basically a parking lot that used to be that the game was full. That was my only question. Okay, well, but I haven't been around that long, Rick. But I know what you're talking about. <laughs> You've been around that long. I have. Uh, you probably swam there. <laughs> and it's got, um, does HeartMath own the parcels next to it on there as well? Yes. Okay. Because I was trying to figure out why the number per square foot was so much higher than, you know, the comparables, right? When you, when you come down to it. And I figured it was a combination of they must have owned the parcels next door, plus they're the only guys. And so we're, we're kind of stuck with a monopoly situation because their, their price per square foot is about 165% over the average of the, comparables which is yeah okay so um so we're stuck um okay yeah i definitely would like to see the report as well and make sure that the customer gets that because um i, I know where this is and it the, people have a reasonable concern it we to, yeah yes. we need to address that great so, okay great thank you okay. um i would also like to address by that report, I assume you mean the uh, report from the acoustical yes. engineer. Okay. Yeah. Um, I request that that would come back to the engineering environmental committee first uh, so that we could look at that. Um, I'm willing to bet that it has some uh, mitigation measures in it being you could add the following additional equipment or you can do the following additional construction. Uh, before we offer a report like that out to uh, to a homeowner, I'd like to know what do those other items cost on a on a rough basis, so that we're not advertising something that is then going to cost double what it might to build the to build the pump station. So Mark. simply that. 
Yeah, Mark, I, I understand, but I mean, it is in a residential area. I think we have to do what's necessary to get the noise down right. to where it is, even if it right. costs twice as much. Right. I understand that. I just like to know what that is before we set that up. So, I mean, rough estimate. Yeah, just that's all. Yeah, that's all the same them. similar yeah. process. Like it's all of people who stayed here. Oh, and it maybe it's something like you fairly minimal. Some sound insulation. I don't. But let's hope. Yeah, but I'd like to see that first. So, and we've talked about you know typical noise and the transformer step down transformers can put out a large a loud buzz and right. we're looking at all of that. Okay. So it's not just the pump. No, there's other components that make noise. Right. Okay. Good. Okay. And at different frequencies too, I'm sure. <laughs> um, then I'd like to make the motion that the board authorize the district manager to uh, purchase uh, a uh, 1,265 square foot easement from HeartMath LLC in the amount of 10,000 on APN. 082-031-18 for the purpose of construction of a pump house to supply water to Bracken Brain Four Springs Mutual Water Company. Second. Okay. Um, would any member of the public like to comment on this? Uh, seeing none in the audience and None online that want to comment. Um, then, Holly, would you take a roll, please? President Smalley? Yes. Vice President Hill? Yes. Director Ackman? Yes. Director Fulce? Yes. Director Mayhood? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Uh, on to item 10C, the district manager evaluation. Rick? Yes, um, the district manager's contract effective uh, October 19, 2019, and each October 19th thereafter, the manager shall be entitled to an annual cost of living adjustment or its equivalent given to district employees at the discretion of the board based upon a satisfactory performance rating from the board. The manager shall receive a written evaluation which relates to achievements or mutually defined goals and objectives at least once a year from the board. At the discretion of the board, manager will also be eligible uh, for uh, up to a yearly 5% merit increase based on performance. At the regular board meeting conducted November 17, 2022, uh, the board reported out of closed session that it voted 4-0 to approve a satisfactory performance evaluation of the district manager for the past year, 2021-2022, which entitles him to a cost of living Full adjustment as of October 19, 2022. Under the district memorandum of understanding with the management employees, the FOLA percentage increase was 5%. At discretion of the board, the district manager uh, may be eligible for additional merit increase up to 5%. Okay. Thank you. Uh, questions from board? Jamie? I don't think we have a lot of questions about this. I think it's to the board. Okay. Yep. No questions. Okay. Bob? Sorry, just to make sure I'm getting the COLA right, that's a 5% COLA that's already been awarded. Yeah. Yeah. Based on the contract and the changes in the MOU. That's correct. Right. Okay. So what we're talking about here is taking it from 5 to up to 10% if the full 5% merit was granted. Do I get that? Do I understand that right? That's the consideration. The one's merit and cost of living. Yeah, I understand yeah. that, but I mean, right. taking you the total said, amount of the yes. raise yes. from 5% up to as much as 10%. Correct. Okay. Okay. Yep. Um, well, my own opinion is that we should give Rick the 5% merit increase in light of all the catastrophes that we've had to work through um, this last year and the time that he spent, given that he's in management, he doesn't get time and a half the way the other staff did. Um, and I think this is kind of a 
a very minimal way of um, compensating him for that. Um, the fact that, I don't know about you, but I, the fact that I just trust Rick to show up when it needs to be is something that makes me um, feel much more secure about the district. And I really appreciate that we're in the position to have somebody like that that, that really cares about making things right. You know what, could I add something? Sure, let me let me go first. Sure. And then I'll come back to you, Jamie. Um, Rick notified uh, the board in January of his plans to retire. Um, and I fully appreciate his you know, desire to do that. At the same time, um, he could have told us and given us a 60 day notice at that point. And given where we were in January with uh, pulling hair out uh, from Rick and staff in order to try to keep the system running during the floods, uh, I, I was concerned about you know, a short notice. Instead, Rick has agreed to stay on um, until we have a replacement identified um, and in-house. So I greatly appreciate that. Uh, I am also of the opinion that a 5% uh, uh, compensation merit increase is appropriate uh, for Rick, given that, and given the fact that uh, the water continued to flow on a regular basis throughout the disasters that we had earlier this year. So, uh, Jamie? I, I just wanted to add, I mean, I thought it seemed like very straightforward that he had earned that given all of the contract negotiations and where we landed with the rest of staff. And so I, I felt really good about um, giving that to him. But I also want to say, I'm not saying that as we go through the recruitment process, we're, we're going to bring in um, the next GM at the top of the um, pay scale, but they're going to look at the top of the pay scale and they're going to look at what the current GM is making. Yeah. And this will <clears throat> make the position more attractive to some people. So, you know, I think in it, not just because you have been a wonderful GM, but also because we want to get a replacement wonderful GM. Um, I support this. Okay. Um, then I'd like to move that the board of directors. Uh, could I make a, a, a sure. quick note? Uh, as written here, it says zero to 5%. Um, do we want to amend that before we vote and just I'm, say 5%? Well, that's what I was going to read. Ah, good. So. I just wanted to make sure because okay. as written it said zero to five. Right. Um, I move that the board of directors um, establish a district manager's annual compensation merit increase to be five percent to be effective retroactively to October 19, 2022. Second. Okay. Um, would any member of the public I, I, like? Excuse, excuse me. I think you just sit by me. I have a few things I want to ask. And say. Oh, I, I, I oh, thought I, no. I'm sorry, Bob. Oh, I'm, I understand you may not want to, um, <laughs> Bob. No, I, right, but that's okay. I was going this way. So and I thought I, I, had, I want to make sure I understood your um, comment about the 60 day notice. I thought in the last update of the contract, we specifically requested a nine month notice to retire specifically because of the fact that we, it would take time to replace Rick. So how would he be able to do the 60 day notice I, then? I'm not certain on that, but I know that there was a 60 day in there also, but. Well, I understand no, that, but the, but the, 90, the nine month, yeah, no, but I mean, I, right. I, I, I don't want that to be a, um, okay. the nine month was negotiated in good faith, specifically to make sure that we weren't sort of left with no district manager right. uh, okay. once that notification was made. So the, the 60 day to me is not a, not really on the table relative to retirement. Uh, now he could quit maybe if he wanted to, but not necessarily for retirement. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I, you, you know, we, um, I, you know, I wish my, our community was, was looking at these kinds of pay raises. Um, Right now, I think we're looking somewhere around two and a half percent of the average bill going to one person. 
Um, I think a 5% increase is sufficient given everything that we're facing here as a district. Um, things, are, things are really tough for the people that actually have to pay the bills. And that's who I'm focused on right now. Um, so in the past, what we've done, or at least the policy that we had, informal one, is that we'd actually have the number available and announce that as what the compensation would be once these pay raises took effect. So I think we need to do that here uh, as well. We did it last year, we did it the year before, we've done it every year that I've been on the board. The this says it right here, yeah, fiscal, fiscal impact. impact. Yep, is on is page 40. Is what again? Uh, 11,926. That's at 5%. Yes. But we also have the, the, what we came back with is what his total compensation would be after COLA, after merit race. And we stated what that number was, 200 and that's, whatever. That's what this is. Because what we're saying is he already got the 5% COLA. That's already factored in. So the additional 5% would bring him to the 11,926 um, monthly or 250, 450. I, I, uh, I wasn't reading this correctly then. So let me, and it may be that other people would have difficulties with it as well. So right now what you're saying is that Rick's salary after the 5% COLA is 238,524. No. Oh, after, yeah. Yes. After the COLA, after 238. The COLA, 238. Okay. And after the 5% merit, it's 250. 450. Okay. So yeah. I didn't get the, how the numbers are flowing. The agenda. Okay. Let, let's make sure we're announcing it, but I didn't get that through reading it. Okay. So we're at 250, 450. Um, yeah. So we're at about 2.5% of the average bill uh, for this compensation. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, then I made a motion um, abruptly. Apologize for <sighs> skipping over you, Bob. Uh, but uh, I made a motion. I seconded it. Oh, okay. All right. Um, anybody from the public? We'll go back to that. Uh, would like to speak? I don't see anybody here, and I don't see anybody online either. So, uh, Molly? President Smalley? Yes. Vice President Hill? Yes. Director Ackman? Yes. Director Falls? No. Director Mayhood? Yes. Motion passes. Marty, I can just quick say thanks to the board, and I would like to thank the employees because the employees are a big part of what we do. It's not just one person. Um, yes, I'm the general manager, but we have a great staff, and we can do it without the staff. Agreed, but it takes somebody to lead that staff. <laughs> You're it for now. <laughs> so thank you. Okay, uh, moving on then to item 10. D, uh, District Manager of Transition, Rick. Hey, uh, working with the, the ad hoc committee, we thought it would be a, a good time <laughs> to bring this discussion uh, to the board to, dis to discuss the transition. You know, as has been said tonight, that I am not planning just to you know walk out the door without a, a general manager uh, here uh, in the seat at, at the office. Um, in, in planning my retirement, I have to make some decision with CalPERS and so forth and notify them. I, I just can't walk out the door, so to speak. Um, we talked with uh, our recruiter, and um, we uh, established a rough time frame of what it's going to take uh, to bring a new uh, general manager to the district. We, um, you know... For me to, to give retirement and, and talking with PERS, it is a three, it's about a three month process, anywhere up to a three month process to process my retirement. Um, not asking the board to take any action tonight, but just trying to get the feel of the board uh, for my retirement planning that I would like to 
put into PERS to retire, you know, after that new general manager either signs or takes the seat. And that process could take up to three months. So there would be a carryover. We've talked about carryover. Um, we discussed, you know, if, you know, what would be needed. Um, you know, and I and I don't like said I don't want to leave the district, uh, you know, in a state of confusion with the new GM. I, I want that person to be able to get up to speed. I'm looking for a very smooth transition. I think all of you are. Um, so I'm trying to just get a feel if, if that type of carryover would be acceptable. Because I, I don't want to put in now and then have to go out the door and the new GM, we're unsuccessful in, in six months. We're looking at eight months. Um, so I thought, you know, the, the ad hoc committee, we discussed it. We thought it would be a good time to bring it to the board as we're in this process. Okay. All right. Well, then, um, Jamie, Jeff, um, and the ad hoc committee, what's been your take on it? Let me start with Jamie. I'm, I'm really torn, I have to tell you, because um, I, I want you to stay on and I want there to be a great transition period. But the one thing that the recruiter said that did, I was like, well, that rings true a little bit, is you may find a candidate who's like, I don't want that. I do not want the old general manager hanging around for three months when I'm trying to, you know, sort of create my own, you know, process for, for leadership. We may not, maybe we'll find a general manager who's like, yeah, I definitely want that. I, I you know, and, but I'm, I wonder if there's some kind of a contingency plan that we as a board could have so that if we did have a candidate say, um, I really, you know, I'm, I'm happy to come on, but I'm uncomfortable with this three month transition. Is there anything that you could do to shorten that? Or does the, you know, general manager, I don't want to come on and be an apprentice to a general manager for three months. What would our options as a board be um, to say, like, you move into a, interim role of some kind or I don't know what the options are. So to me this seems fairly simple. Um, and it's it's a, a tapering off and the new person comes in and gets the badge. They are the new person there, they're the person from that point on. The outgoing person is available as a consultant, as an advisor to the new person, not to the staff, um, except as invited by the new person. And over time, the amount of time he, you know, as, as time wears, that runs down here on this three months, the amount of time he spends in the office as opposed to being available to meet with a new general manager over coffee at a restaurant somewhere, uh, you, you, you taper this down so that. Um, by the time the end of the three months is there, you don't notice that he's gone. Um, and, well, that's a, I think, <laughs> I think, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Rick is looking at um, no gap between salary mm -hmm. and retirement. Right. Right. And, yeah, but I'm not talking about, I mean, he's still an employee. Right. He's still an employee. He's an employee, but his his role is not come into the office necessarily. Come into the office and make decisions and right. tell the employees what to do. His role is to act as the mentor, advisor, um, right. resource person for the new general manager. And, and at what what, what we'll compensation? Gail's face suggests she has a solution. So I'm ing <laughs> the reason I'm going is because when Rick announced that he was thinking of retiring, I did a fair amount of reading about the rules uh, with CalPERS in terms of bringing people back and under what circumstances they could stay on. And it became clear to me that one of the options would be, and it could be in the cases that you just sort of said, is if you had somebody you really didn't want, somebody kind of peering over their shoulder, is there's plenty of opportunities for putting somebody in charge of special projects, right? mm -hmm. things that the district you know, needs done, whether it's, you know, remodeling a space or taking charge of a particular um, engineering project or doing, you know, being the, you know, reaching out to certain groups of people or whatever. So right. I think that this is something that would be negotiated at the time when we had a new person in place and, and make them feel very comfortable about, you know, what they wanted and the role that 
Jeff just described would be a tapering down, but that doesn't mean that Valerie Rick wouldn't be coming in or working less. He'd be working for his money, but we'd do it on some kind of projects that were mutually agreed upon between Rick, the board, and the new district manager. Yeah, and the Valerie. intent would be at the same compensation? Yeah. So effectively, it's sort of a uh, uh, almost like a severance package, but not well, called that because we no, can't I don't say think that. It's a, no, it's not a severance package. I mean, it was at least the way CalPERS, they, had, they actually had a number of ways you could do this. Mm -hmm. And um, but uh, I, I wouldn't think of it as a severance. It's just it, there are it's allowed to have this kind of overlap kinds of situations. And that's up to, yeah, we just had another individual retire on our chem came into my office Monday and said he's putting, he's retiring and he got through PERS in three weeks. So this, you know, there's conflicting information. You get conflicting information with PERS, you know, just saying it so twice. But it could take up to three months. And, you know, I could easily, as soon as we get a person that signs, they can start that process and it could be you know, is it could be up to three months, but it could be sooner. I, I'm pretty easy, and again, like you say, Jamie, I agree with you. Probably, depending on the manager, may not want um, a past district manager there. I, I strongly agree with that. Um, so, I, you know, I want to exit, but I want to exit in a way that I don't leave the district without a job. I mean, I, I don't think you would have wanted uh, the prior guy hanging around. Uh, no, right. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Her. So, I, but the, but the idea is it's the same compensation as long as your retirement doesn't kick in. So, right. and so you, you would you would you would leave yeah. after yeah, um, <laughs> well, slightly different work. Yes, yeah, so maybe you know, different compensation. Yeah, it the, could be working on the consolidation. You know, it could be all you know. But the but, intent is to retire. Okay, I understand, but I want to make sure I'm really clear here. Are you signing up for a fixed three months, or is it variable up to three months? Up to the boards. Are you all serious? I, I'm what? trying. I'm, I'm trying to understand what your expectations are. I, 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 my only expectations are to give coverage with a smooth transition, Bob. Okay. And be able to retire, leave the district, and then start receiving. You know, I don't want to wait three months for my first check first. So you so, understand. So if you got through it in three weeks, and the, and the new general manager said, "Hey, we got it covered." Yeah, then, then you're, you're fine. I'm out. Okay. That okay. does bring up another question, though. What if you got through it in three weeks and the new general manager is like, I could really use you around for another month or so? That's a poor decision. And that's a well, discussion. not 100% because you'd have to be willing to do that. Well, yeah. If, yeah, because you know, it impacts you. Yeah. Because it I'm impacts not, you. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to impact my purse because once you start taking purse, Gail's right, there's ways. That's there right. are ways to do it. But it's, multiple ways. It's, it's I not know, I know, I've been thinking about it. I'm anticipating a, a pretty quick, smooth transition. You've got, you know, you've, you've got a new district engineer now, so that person will be up to speed. Uh, legal counsel is getting up to speed very quickly. I feel much more comfortable. Okay. okay. And Rick, I think you expressed concern to me with the day we hire a, a new district manager, the board's saying, okay, Rick, yeah, no, plan no, on no, your no. retirement party for tomorrow, <laughs> bye. That is a concern. Okay, um, and it was, and this discussion was to get a feel from the board as to whether we were gonna yeah. say, yeah. move it sooner. No, I don't think that's the intent, but I mean, it's a two-way street. We exactly. have, to have, yeah. we exactly. have to have clarity on the two-way street. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. And I think I do it now. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh, this act. This discussion was simply for discussion. Right. Discussion. And there's no uh, action to be taken on this. Uh, does anybody from the public uh, want to comment on this item? Go ahead, Mr. Holloway. When I saw this item on the agenda, I thought uh, the district manager would be transitioning to a new role, uh, kind of the way Director Hill said, uh, consultant or advisor. Um, I've been noticing the date below the logo on the sign there, it's 1941. 
and I know that the current district manager has been working for the district for most of that time. <laughs> um, Thanks, Bruce. Athletic, so there's a tremendous amount of institutional knowledge here. Um, about CalPERS, I think after someone retires, they can still go to work for some agency for up to 960 hours a year, which is pretty close to six months. Um, and the, the part about this that, so, so I think uh, it, it, it might be good to have, uh, have such a knowledgeable consultant available even for as much as three years, not just three months. But on the other hand, I feel kind of bad that it sounds like uh, CalPERS is driving this process. It's all about CalPERS. Um, the county has 2,000 employees, and there must be somebody retiring down there every week. And I don't think they're all getting an extra three months just because we don't know how fast CalPERS operates. Uh, so that, that wrinkle uh, just seems sort of irrelevant to me. Um, the other thing is about the special projects. I, I'm afraid that there would need to be another uh, discussion item just like this one to talk about special projects. And then the new district manager would have to be involved in special, you know, picking special projects and thinking about it. And that sounds like a whole big, uh, a whole other big topic uh, that maybe isn't really necessary to get into. So I have mixed feelings about it. I don't know. I don't really know what to say. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, I do see uh, one of the members of the public online, uh, Nicole Lauder Breckenridge. Nicole Lauder Breckenridge. Breckenridge. Thank you. Nicole? Nicole, would you like to speak? We have her available to speak. That's what it looks like right now. Um, I, don't, I don't see her moving in. Mm, is she even in the speaking area? Hmm. Um. I'm, okay. I'm texting the facilitator right now. I don't know why she normally we see them pop up in the yeah. in our area. I don't see talking from uh, there. She, now. Uh, there she is. Okay, can you hear me now? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't get the button to unmute until just now. Um, I just want to express um, from Brack and Brace perspective that um, Rick has been with us. Um, at, for those of you who don't know out in the audience, what have you, that we're going through this consolidation process um, as a result of the CZU fire. But we have a meeting with Rick since uh, March of 2021. And it's really critical to us to know that the things that we've been working on are not lost to somebody new in their haste to, you know, take over. So we would support Rick um, if the new person coming on does not want him to be in a in office situation that Rick, you know, work on special projects. I also, from going through the FEMA process for Brackenbrae, um, think that with the two most recent disasters and the CZU fire not getting along as far as it should have by this time, that um, Rick could, you know, probably be beneficial to that process. I know there's a consultant being hired, but I just think that there, if Rick wants, I'm not trying to push Rick because I'm sure he's ready for retirement, but um, yeah. there's definitely that tie over that's important with his knowledge. And that's all I'm going to say is that I support him staying on um, a reasonable amount of time. Thank you. Thanks, Nicole. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, without Bob? Just to, to follow up, Max, I think Nicole makes a really good point. Um, one of the special projects could be um, documentation uh, associated with the things that are in Rick's head that maybe are not in the systems yet uh, at the level that maybe we want them to be at. Um, you've been here a long time. I mean, it's 50, 
not quite 50 years, 47 something. Um, there may be things that you do know that aren't captured yet inside of our systems. And as we, as we move into an area where there is transition in staff, uh, it's really important to capture as much of that knowledge as possible um, so that the people that come after you have the ability to take advantage of what you know. Um, moving on then to the consent agenda. Um, there are two items on the consent agenda. Does anybody want to comment on either of those items? Not seeing anybody. Um, district reports. Um, department status reports. We've got uh, four, uh, starting with environmental. Um, so let's uh, go through any comments on the environmental. Uh, Jeff? Jamie? Bob? Uh, no, just that I'm happy we got our grant. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to taking full advantage of that. Yes. Okay, Gail? Um, I do have one comment or question on it. Um, it's addressing, it describes a Loch Lomond feasibility study that is supposed to be out in July. Uh, what is that going to cover? What? Right. You know? So right now, Mark, we're working with the city of Santa Cruz. Um, we just received back their comments in the last week. Uh, we mm -hmm. supplied them with the draft RFP. So the, the feasibility right now, it's just going out for a request for proposals. Um, and that oh, okay. from there will enter into going into the full feasibility study. Okay, so we don't have a feasibility study. We're issuing an RFP to get one. Exactly. Okay, yeah, all right. I think the last one is 10 or 12 years old. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so uh, things are different. Yeah. There's still a lot of good information. Yeah, no. clears, clears that up for me. Okay, uh, moving on then. Uh, finance, uh, Bob? Uh, no. Questions on that, Gail? Uh, Jeff? Uh, only one comment. It looks like uh, with water deliveries continuing to drop, we may be getting very close to needing to, uh, you know, to triggering our uh, revenue trip. Uh, drought rates, special rates. We're it'll go up with the change of weather. Um, not sure. I'm sorry. It'll go up with the change of weather now. Sorry. Yeah, because we were at the, uh, ten percent. Below. Yeah. Uh, the last, yeah. there. You know, it, that's interesting in that I know one of the messages that tends to go out around drought conservation is save money. Yeah. And so, you know, I, it's sort of a mixed message, you know. I, I understand. So, just... you know, save water, save money. No, just kidding. Uh, raise rates. Um, so, and I, I've seen on Facebook a number of people yes. that talk about that when these sorts of things happen. I, I think if we, we really need to work on our messaging around yes. that. Yes, I, I, I fully agree. I'm just saying it looks like we're very close to being triggered by our policy, and we may right. need to uh, we may need to address that issue. Well, we could have addressed it beforehand, but we chose um, not to. But yeah. but any further questions on the Finance report, please. No. Okay, Jamie. Um, my only comment was just that we're down year over year because we had an unusually cool long spring, and yes, okay. Yep. Okay. I think that's what you're sort of implying that. Yeah, it'll, yeah. it'll start going up, but I'm not sure if it's going to go. Up. No, I haven't. Kendra and I really haven't talked about um, that at this point. I mean, the history has been once it goes down, it doesn't come back. Boom. Well, you know, once you ask people to conserve and they conserve 11%, they change habits, it might come up uh, three points or four points, but it's probably not going back to where it was, historically speaking. So I've noticed also looking at the month by month uh, projections and then deliveries that I think out of the last 12 months, we overestimated on eight of them. So we need probably to take a better look at our. Uh, Estimated, estimating uh, procedure there, because uh, it doesn't do us any good to overestimate on deliveries and then have short ones. I think we 
did make some changes in the upcoming yeah. budget that yeah. did lower some of those estimates and hopefully yeah. that's partially corrected. Yeah. That's something we need to keep an eye on because we, we can't continuously be overestimating and then catching up. Yeah. I mean, it's not, I don't know that it's all necessarily conservation. We, we had, I just looked up the weather from last spring and we had some periods of real heat waves last spring which would drive people to use more water. That's just, you know, so if we didn't have those heat waves, we're just not gonna get that consumption. Uh, moving on then, any uh, questions on legal aspects? Legal? Yeah. Bob? Yeah. Um, I have one. Um, Rick, to, in your report, um, Staff has not had the bandwidth to keep up with the amount of uh, either feedback or information that we're now getting from uh, our new district council. Well, I, I, I want to make sure that you didn't get, I didn't give the appearance that, uh, you know, we should have got more done and, and that's not council's fault. It's just that I've been, you know, working, taking, doing, picking up a lot of Josh's right. duties and so forth. Okay. And, we're starting to, we're getting more and more done. We've got, you know, the, the consolidation agreements are out. The uh, right. um, Lost Acre Tank uh, entry agreement is out to the property owner. Um, yeah. That's been completed. Um, but we still got a lot to do. With it's not, council has been very right. attentive. But I take it that, uh, that Barbara and her team are getting stuff done now. Yes, for they're you. there. And, okay. Yes. Good. Good. Glad to glad to hear that. Um, any questions on operations, uh, Bob? Yeah, I just had one on the uh, surface water. Sort of a preview on uh, uh, July. Are we still pretty robust on surface water? It says it's right there. Starting now. to drop down with you know the change of weather. Yeah. It drops down just as quick sometimes as, as, as it goes up. Goes up because because we're at eighty percent or as of the end of June. Uh, obviously, Fall Creek maintains a strong producer even with the work going on in the bypass and uh, the foreign creek is starting to drop down and our consumption is as noted yeah you know and so well I may was below four we're still moving fall creek water into the north system okay. we're not moving i don't believe any any surface water over to uh, scotts valley at this time okay so they're all on well right we're back i'm pretty sure about that well you know i'm here uh, James, and I can James answer that probably the, a little bit better. The voice, the voice. <laughs> the voice um, yeah, Bennett Raw Water Pipeline came back onto service during the month, and that's why raw water, surface water. Really. I'm sorry, what again came back online? Bennett yeah. Springs oh. Raw Water Pipeline. Okay. And that's the increase in surface water. Excellent. Okay. We can use as much as we can. Gail, any, any other questions on operations? Okay, I don't have any at this point. Uh, okay, um, committee reports. By the way, question um, questions. questions. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I think I just heard that uh, Fall Creek water is being sent to the north system. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Um, so it's been a long time. I used to be pretty aware of the water rights down in Felton. Santa Cruz has one and, and we inherited one from Cal Am. Um, so I've lost track of, of uh, the status of those water rights. But the, for one thing, the uh, Fall Creek water right said that the water, the place of use could only be Felton. So has that changed? Um, Rick? I was going to say, Carly, you want to answer that? I can answer that. <laughs> Thanks for deferring, though. <laughs> Carly? Oh, sure, wow. James is welcome to answer oh, it. No, he wants you to answer. You go ahead. Okay. Um, so we're actually, we're in operating currently under an emergency um, because of our intakes being offline in the north part of the system. Um, as part of our conjunctive use, we are uh, evaluating the uh, place of use change through the environmental impact report we're completing. 
Um, so we are in the process and we have alerted the state of our, our transfers um, and that place of use. Change. So, so basically part of the Santa Margarita groundwater plan is being implemented by proxy because of this emergency use. We're able to share water amongst our entire we've system. Been for yeah, I understand that, but we haven't been sending surface water regularly no. from right. Fall Creek out right. or surface water to Scotts Valley. We have been doing that right. since the um, because of the emergency, because of the emergency. Right. circumstances following the CCE fire and the loss of our pipeline. So, right. so we're effectively acting as if we had new water rights. Yeah. I, I think that's great. Um, at the bottom of page 127, there was. Uh, an item on the legal report. I guess there's dueling water rights down there in Felton, and I guess that's in front of the state water board. Um, and I've kind of lost track of where this all is. And so I'm wondering, are there, um, are the applications from the two agencies on file in a way that a member of the public can see them? Is it really the state water board or the, the regional water board? I don't really understand the process. Is there a hearing date set at some time in the future? Um, just a little bit of information about that is what I was hoping for. Thank you. I, I don't believe so. Carly, do you have any response to that? Right. So we we did about two years ago, um, right after, I guess, pretty quickly after the fires, we did submit letters to the State Water Resource Control Board, um, ask, you know, telling them about our situation and asking which process they wanted us to go through, explaining that we were going through the EIR process and planning to do the place of use change. Uh, but we had not heard back. I think we've sent a few follow-ups, but the state, it sounds like they're pretty underwater. Um, no pun intended, but <laughs> um, but we, we have been co coordinating with them um, and that's something we got to keep pushing. Um, the place of use, we did actually complete the petition and that's in draft form and it's waiting for legal review and that's something that our new legal counsel is going to have to catch up on so we are meeting all bypass requirements in Belton, correct Carter? that's correct yes we are meeting all our bypass requirements and we have our uh, 1600 permit through the california department of fish and wildlife as well for the diversion yeah. Historically, we haven't been out of compliance at this time anyway. It's normally in the no, later once fall. In a while. Once in a while, but yeah, mostly yeah. later in the fall. Yeah. I have a question about the uh, item on uh, page 128 in reference to the Felton Heights tank. I understand that uh, the legal process is afoot. Uh, I'm a bit curious to know about the three options that are apparently being uh, presented and how they might affect us at the top. As you know, uh, uh, my wife and I have been, and others have been concerned about the location of the tank, and uh, uh, we would like some clarity if it is to be had. Do you want to address that previously, Mr. Jameson, yeah, we, we're centering on that second alternative site, which is further away on the other side of the access road from your property. And we've just currently uh, corresponded back and forth with the property owner on a temporary uh, access agreement so we can perform geotechnical uh, appraisal and um, uh, environmental review. Um, and he is reviewing that and we'll be signing it hopefully shortly. And that'll be the next phase that we'll move on that project. Thank you. Um, we concluded the items on our agenda for this evening. Uh, given that, I'd like to adjourn the meeting. The next board meeting is scheduled for August 3rd. Okay. So that is adjourning at 7.39 p.m. Thank you, Eric.